and the beat don't stop. Still 187 when the baseline drop. Hello everyone and welcome to Glasgow Live. My name is Darren Connell and we've took the podcast to Glasgow Live. This is the first one. We're joined with two guests tonight, my good friend Robert Florence, right beside me, and my pal John McMustard, from Colonel Mustard and the Dijon Five. Thanks for having me, Dan. Thanks for coming, Trips. Everybody's like, ah, Dan, are you wearing a suit tonight? You need to wear a shirt, no pair of denims, and I was like, ah, mate, would you, you think I'm Des Clark, mate? <laughs> would you think, you think I'm going to turn up in a bow tie, mate? What a body Des Clark's got, by the way. Have you seen Des Clark in the scud? Uh, no. He's, he was a wee, he's wiry, he's like muscly, his enemy, he's in good shape. He's got good Des eyebrows. Clark, he's a muscly, very good eyebrows, he's a good looking guy, Des Clark. Well preened. Big shout out to Des Clark. Well, this is why I'm turning up in my bathrobe, mate, because I'm not going to wear a suit. Do you know what I mean? I wear this at parties. It's a strong look. Uh, you are looking good as well, I like the mask as well, Robert. Cheers. Is that for your North Glasgow days? It's not a mask. It's a balaclava, actually. <laughs> it's um, one of the favourite bits of face wear for terrorists, for rebels, um, for people who want to incite a movement of some kind. Do you know what I mean? And what, if you get petrol bombs in your bag? Or? No, it's not, about, it's not about violence for me, mate. Just carry on. Aye. And love? John, you're into the love, aren't you? I am, mate. I'm into the peace and love. Peace loves and... Peace, peace, love, and balaclavas. Aye. You actually suit that, mate. You do suit that. What, suit this balaclava? Aye. I'm going to be wearing this balaclava uh, every day until the 7th of December, Friday the 7th of December, when my, my new show, The State of It, starts 10pm, BBC Two Scotland. I'm going to be wearing this balaclava every day until that airs, and then I'm going to be wearing the balaclava every day after that as well, mate. I like it, mate. I'm going to be lying in my coffin, open casket funeral, with a balaclava on. And people will come up and they'll be like, Rab's deed, Rab's deed, and they'll all be greeting, and they'll all be filing past my coffin, mate. <laughs> and somebody will want to kiss me, no doubt, and they'll lift up my balaclava to give me a kiss. It's fucking not even me in the coffin. <laughs> <laughs> it's somebody else. It's you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Are you looking forward to the new show? I'm looking forward to the new show. It's important that everybody out there watches this new show, because this is a show that we're going we're gonna to be breaking loads of new talent in Scotland through this show, so we need support watching it on that first night if you've ever wanted to be on telly doing some comedy or whatever then it is your mission to watch this show friday 7th of december 10 p.m the state yeah brilliant what, what new talent have you got rab on the show aye mate you'll have to tune in to aye, see okay. you have to tune in to see right who's on there but there have been people that have been blown up on youtube blown up twitter and we pulled them in we're getting them they're shot on telly and they've smashed it They've smashed it. Some of these people, you need, you need, you need to tune in and watch it. The uh, BBC are getting a new channel and all these, all the new content's coming out. Aye. I actually tried to bring the podcast to it and they gave me a knockback, so I <laughs> uh, know that I'm bitter. Did you pitch it? Aye. And they were just like, nah, that's shit, mate. I was like, alright. And here we are. <laughs> Aye. Right. I can't, you can't walk into you the are. BBC building. Still, Glasgow Live's as good as the BBC, I would say. Yes. Aye. You that's can sit in your bathrobe. That's true. It's up there, but I'm not sure why they've given me a Netflix mug. <laughs> <laughs> and you've you've got a massive gig coming up this year as well, haven't you, John? Aye, uh, the band are playing in the, the Barras, the best venue in the world, on Saturday the 22nd of December, so aye, it should, should be good. And um, you've nearly sold that out, haven't you? We're, we're more than halfway there. We've sold over a thousand, which is no bad, so... I were getting there. That's impressive numbers. Aye, we've got the Christmas single coming out early December. Um, we're doing a documentary about when we were in Korea, down at the border, uh, playing at the DMZ. So we've got enough enough promo, hopefully, to take us over the edge. But when you actually did that? Aye, aye. aye we were down. I, I wasn't wearing my balaclava. I, should I have did been think mate. about it. You should have been. We were told if we'd went down wearing the military stuff and yellow kind of suits and that, we might have been Sniper shot. Sniper would have took you. <laughs> Uh, but you'd have you'd get on a Christmas number one. Amazing if you'd have done publicity. I know. <laughs> what was that like as a gig being there? There. Uh, it was amazing. I we, they put us on at a K-pop festival the day before, which was weird because it was all kind of boy and girl bands. Which you know we don't support boy and girl bands here, but in Korea, 
it made sense to put cover must of maybe John Five on with him there and now it was amazing. That's me. Crowds mate. of thousands just loving it, crossing the road and somehow understanding me. That That's amazing, amazing mate. You look like a Scottish hip hop artist with that mask. Yeah, mate. It's funny you say that because I kind of consider myself like the kind of Kanye West, Kendrick Lamar, a Scottish comedy. I kind of feel I've got that kind of message. I'm bringing that kind of message to people. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm kind of talking directly, like the night, for example. I'm, you know, directly to Nicola Sturgeon. I'm talking to because people come on and they promote their shows, right? They promote their shows. And they say, oh, watch my show. You might like it. No, no, right? Oh, I hope you like my show. No, no. The state of it on Friday, 7th of December, Nicola Sturgeon should be talking about this. I am I am requesting Nicola Sturgeon as a First Minister. She should be putting out a statement ordering people to watch this show because if she cares about the future of talent in Scotland, then this show has to be a success. So this is a direct challenge to Nicola Sturgeon. <laughs> Do something. Do something. Make a statement about us. You know what I mean? Nicola Sturgeon seems brand new and all, didn't she? Well, does she? I don't know. We'll see if she says anything about the state yet. <laughs> you had a picture with Nicola Sturgeon, didn't you, John? Uh, recently on Facebook? Did I? Aye, when you announced the podcast. Oh, that, was, that was Susan Boyle, mate. <laughs> it, was a, it was a reference to Biscuity Boyle. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> but okay. it was actually Susan Boyle. Right, okay. There's a similarity there, kind of. Well, uh, quite a few folk thought Susan Boyle was going to be on with us, which, which would have been interesting on this couch. Aye. What's, what's happened to Susan Boyle anyway? She's not done much recently, has she? No, uh, I think she moved back into her house, didn't she? She didn't like her mansion. She moved, moved back, back into, into her house. house. She goes to party at the palace every year. Oh, does That's she? That's where I met her. I had to, not that folk What is that? Uh, it's a festival. Proclaimers played it last right. year. It was James and that this year. But uh, she was standing watching the Proclaimers and folk weren't deliberately trying to hit her with balloons and that, but they kept flying over. So I spent the whole right. of the Proclaimers gig protecting Susan Boyle for like inflatables. Ah. It's one of my claims to fame. The bold Subo. Aye. She was like, she was actually nice. Aye. A nice woman. Aye, she's always nice. Aye. I think she kinda Nicola Sturgeon kinda looks like her. If fast forward thirty years and that's Nicola Sturgeon. No. Maybe, maybe. I don't what know. Susan Susan I... Boyle in thirty years will look like Nicola Sturgeon? <laughs> <laughs> Or a way about. I think they look like distant relatives. Nah, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't. Listen, Nicola, <laughs> you need to make a statement about this show that's coming. This show of mine that's coming on BBC Scotland, the seventh of December. I'm, I'm no leaving this. I'm letting this go. Is it just one one episode? Is it like a it's, pilot? You, you know, it's just one episode. Let's not call it a pilot. Let's not demean it by calling it a pilot, right? Because it's a mere call to action. I see, as the BBC have been bold and brave enough to put their show on, and I think that there has to be something that goes through the Scottish Parliament to recognise that. I kind of feel as if BBC Scotland just get it in the neck all the time. You know what I mean? But the BBC get it in the neck. I'm not paying my licence fee. Pay your licence fee, you tramps. I'm saying it, right? Maybe the BBC will say it. You won't see Jackie Bird saying this. I'll say it. Pay your licence fee, you tramps, right? Because we know you're watching the BBC. We know you're watching iPlayer. We know you're watching all our shows. So pay your licence fee, right? Or we'll come... We'll, there's plenty of fucking guys that can handle ourselves, by the way, at the BBC. We'll come knocking on your door, we'll fucking drag you out and make you pay your licence fee. <laughs> you and Ian. Bernstein's coming back as well. Burnison is coming back. Burnison's coming back for a uh, one special show called Burnison Tunes In, um, which will be airing around about the launch of the new BBC Scotland channel. So we'll be around about then. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what the date is. Uh, we'll have to wait for the BBC to, um, to issue instructions on that. You're the Scottish Kanye West, aren't you? It started off as a kind of joke, and it's actually happened. I'm just... I've just had enough. I've just had enough. I kind of feel this is a night to declare it. That I've had enough of the way people are in Scotland about stuff. How apologetic everybody is all the time about stuff. You know what I mean? Such as. The end. Well, people are like people are too humble. I think. I think people are too humble in Scotland. Too humble. Too apologetic. You know what I mean? Too like oh please this, please that. You know what I mean? This guy's selling a thousand tickets at the Battleland already. You know what I mean? Sitting here, he's a fucking legend. You know what I mean? He's a legend. It's time we started recognising our legends. Well, that's true. I, I remember the first time I bumped into you, actually. You were cutting about in a wrestler's mask as well. Remember we were in a pub and you were just... It was like a Rey Mysterio uh, wrestler's mask. I think it was a tiger mask mask. It was like a Japanese <laughs> tiger mask mask guy. I remember passing you in Balornik one morning, Rob, on my way to work up at Stop Hill and shouting out the window, Pyramid at you. 
and just gave me a salute. It's humbling. Okay. Yes, man. Yes. Are you still are you still going by the pyramid of guys or? I still I, I was the pyramid for a long time and then I, I was briefly the destroyer. Um, I went back to the pyramid a wee bit, but we'll see. Things are changing. You know what I mean? Aye. I'm, I'm, things are always in flux. <laughs> <laughs> We've, me and Robert had uh, a few things in common as well. Uh, you used to be morbidly obese. I was extremely big. Bariatric? At one point, like, I was extremely, I think at my heaviest, I was like, let me think now, 18, 19 stone. For, and for a wee guy, like, I'm no tall, right? I'm like 5'8 nearly, around about 5'8, right? I look much weird because I'm always standing beside that. Ian Connell, who's about seven foot tall, right? But I was, I was really heavy, man. Aye. You know? I mean, and you found a cure for that. I did find a cure for it. Love. No, mainly walking about. <laughs> <laughs> mainly well, walking. Mate. Well, that's good. That's good that you got it sorted. Um, I'm still battling away, uh, but I'll get there. But you're, will, like, man. you're like the Barry White of Scottish television though, do you know, do you, do you want to give that up? No, not really, You've got no. that crown now. Aye, it's partly, I mean, I was going to wear this as a joke, but it's mm. half the truth is I can't fit into a, a suit, so. You need to get a handlebar tash for, for the next one as <laughs> Aye. well. Let the power get to In me. A harem. Aye. Here's the thing, Dan, you're, uh, you're talking about your shows and all that, right? You've got Scott Squad coming up, if you know as well. Scott Squad's coming back. I don't know if anybody knows that show. I did. Aye, I hope you know he's day. It's coming back for a fifth season uh, in January or February for the new channel as well. And I think it's a five-parter. And uh, aye, we filmed it in June, and we're looking forward to it coming back. And I was just it's and mental. You, and you know the producer of the state yet, didn't you? Producer <coughs> Joe, you know him? Yep. Because he was a creator of Scott Squad. Yes. Producer Joe. Joe with the funny surname. Joe Hooley. Producer Joe. Joe yeah, Hooley, he calls him. Hooley. Right. <laughs> Produ- right, producer. He's, he's Hooley, it's producer Joe to me, right? He is one of the most dominant forces in Scottish comedy at the minute. And I can't wait till you see what me and producer Joe have got lined up for you on Friday, 7th of December at yes. 10 pm. Cheers for giving us a part in that, by the way. What, in the state yet? Aye. It's for, and John as well. Yes, it's thanks. for excellent new talent. Thanks for the show. You're too established. <laughs> You're too established. <laughs> I, was, I had uh, Greg Kempo on the podcast once, and uh, I found it quite funny how people will just say, people that don't really know anything about the telly, will just be like, how can you know just get a part on EastEnders? And I'm like... As Bobby, I'm like, nah, it doesn't really work that way. Uh, and they've said that with like Burniston and stuff. Like, how come Jolly Boy Joan can he get on Scott Squad? I was like, because the uncles on EastEnders uh, would be amazing, though. Well, I. That's. Do you watch EastEnders? <laughs> not particularly. I get an audition for Coronation Street, man. Did you? Yep. What part? A uh, chubby Scottish guy. Uh, Literally chubby Scottish guy. I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that, that was his name. <laughs> I've never, I've never seen Coronation Street. No. Or EastEnders. I don't know. I don't even know what they're about. No, they are. Honestly, I think Danny Dyer's in one of them. Uh, he's in EastEnders. Uh, he's the guy at Love Island. Uh, the last week at Love Island's da. You watch Love Island? Me, I watch Love Island. Like mad. All I watch is. Because people ask me sometimes, you go, oh, you do, what is it you watch? You know what I mean? I tell you what I watch. I watch Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, The Real Housewives of New York, The Real Housewives of New Jersey, The Real Housewives of Orange County and Dance Moms. What about The Real Housewives of Chester? I'd watch, I, I watch every Real Housewives. Uh, mate, don't you worry about it. I watch them all. <laughs> <laughs> I watch all of them. You sound like my girlfriend. In fact. Well, you don't know what's happening under we, this mask, can mate. Can unmask? You don't know what's happening <laughs> under is here. That, is that you, Donna? <laughs> you should start selling them as merch. You should start selling the jackets as well. By the way, you said this is fifty-five pounds worth of sequins, my friend. Aye. Wait, did oh, somebody make this? Aye, you? it's a uh, sequin podium. Uh, Vic Rastel made it. So, aye, she does. She's at most of the festivals. How long so have you had this one? About a year, but it's been in a lot of festivals, so it's a bit underneath. It is a bit worse for wear. Right. 
Darn more that earlier on is like this stinks of uh, all sorts of festival smells. I just smell <laughs> I smell a wee bit smoky. It smells like it's been a boot. Aye. Aye. It's been a boot, it's got a story to tell. It does. Aye. This balaclava I'll get, I'll get was. You one, I'll get you a sequin balaclava. That would one. be good, man. I, I would like that. We glitter on it and stuff. This has this got a lot of stories to tell as well. This has been involved in a lot of. A lot of bombings, mate, I'll be honest. It's been involved in a lot of bombings. <laughs> a lot of bombings. I like, made sure that it had been experienced. Do you know what I mean? All oh, right, I thought that's why you left North Glasgow, because you were doing bookies. I'm not having you slagging off North Glasgow, mate. How? I come from North Glasgow. I know, even so. I'm not having it. I'm not slagging it. it. I wouldn't stone for it, mate. I'm if anybody's face Springburn, then... Nah, we're, uh, we're, we're old school boys for North Glasgow, man. We know all about Stan's Chinese takeaway. Are we allowed to advertise people? Hi. Yeah. Well, you get a fine uh, Chinese takeaway for Stan's, by the way. What about Wills? Nah. Where's that? That's, that's in Springburn, isn't is it? That? Nah. That's, that's, a, that's a Johnny come lately. The Delhi Darba in Ockenairn. Oh, the Delhi, man. Uh, oh, right, I see it for the Delhi, by the way. <laughs> the Delhi in Ockenairn is the best Indian restaurant in Glasgow. Aye. It's Nakadar and Denistons, it's up there as well. It's, there's something it's the about best in North, North Glasgow. Mate, there's something about North Glasgow though. I mean, before we we used to punt guns and all that before we done comedy. That's, that's uh, our way out of North mm-hmm. Glasgow, but stands, yeah. you can't beat a stands, stands mate. I get emotional right. eating chicken buzz for stands. That's get, <laughs> I get that much out of it. that sentence. <laughs> 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 uh, aye, but he's dead now. Who is? Stan. Stan, when did he uh, die? Six months ago. I just made that up. Oh, he's, that's a terrible <laughs> joke to me. I know. You know that when you say something and you instantly regret wait, it. He's wait. probably watching it. Thinking, was, he al- was he also the creator of Spider-Man? <laughs> 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 yes, man. Right. Uh, so, I uh, sorry Stan if you're watching, mate. They do Chinese munchie boxes now. Have you seen them? Oh, aye. Have you ever had one? I've never had any kind of munchie box, mate, because as, as we established earlier, I've uh, stopped being Aye. morbidly obese. You know what I mean? Aye. So well, I can't do that anymore. Well, Ga- Gary for the band has his cousin Alan. He's uh, he's a slimming world instructor, but his customers keep catching him in, in the Chinese restaurant and he just keeps coming up. Oh, it's a, it's a slimming world munchie box. <laughs> <laughs> Aye. I've done slimming world for a couple of weeks and. Uh, you know, it was just like me and about 40 women, and it, it was politics, man. Too much politics. It's uh, cutthroat. This could have been the start of your harem. Go in in the dressing gown next time. <laughs> Payback. Oh, ladies. No, it's a good workout, right? See if you go into, if any has got like a basement or even a crawl space under a flare board in your house. I've got crawl space. Have you got a crawl space? I've got a couple get, of cages. If you get down to your like your boxers and get down into the crawl space and just imagine that you're, there's a ghost attacking you, <laughs> and just fight off a ghost, like just for the sun goes down until the sun comes up, <laughs> and that's a right good. That gets your BPM going. Aye, that sounds good, and it's free as well. Well, aye. In a sense, <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to pay a, a slimming world members fee for that. You don't. That's like a Illuminati that slimming world. You don't have to do that. I just want to give a shout out to Helensborough now. Yeah, I live in Helensborough now, so a big shout out to, to Helensborough where it's all happening. There's a lot of, uh, lot of stuff happening in the streets of Helensborough right now. A lot of good graffiti artists coming out of there. There's a really, really good hip hop scene coming out of Helensborough. Um, skateboarding. I just want to give a big shout out to Helensborough. We're really turning it on right now. If they get a local Chinese that is just as good as Stan's. They they've got the Mandarin in Helensborough. Big shout out to the Mandarin in Helensborough. Do you walk about with a mask on? No, I don't. Next to the naval base. I don't, no. I, <laughs> I don't. I Really in Helensborough, I just, I just like to, I just like to assimilate and just go kind of unnoticed. So usually I just dress up as an old woman. Hi. <laughs> Do you ever see the mountains opening up in Helensborough, like in James Bond and big missiles coming out? No, I have watched for that. But I, have, well, I see submarines a lot. I can sit in my, my living room one day and I can see submarines going past, which is which is magic because it used to just be used to just be like the number sixteen bus I could see from a window. You know what I mean, do you not live in beside any uh, army bases, John? I live next to the Tenants Factory, which is guarded like an army base. <laughs> 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 Barbed wire. I think more for the kind of 1980s locals at Well Park. 
uh, with which they're still a few about, but you don't really see anybody try to go over the top. No? Nah. Stealing free booze? No. Nah. Right. Although, I plug, I'm, I'm playing a DJ set at the opening of the, the new Tenants Factory Visitor Centre this Wednesday. Ah, no uh, bad, mate. Well excellent. done. Aye. Do you want to hear my theory about uh, Faz Lane? Yes. Uh, Army base, by the way. You know, I was getting the peace camp mm-hmm. across the road for Faz Lane, right? Aye. Here's my theory. Faz Lane is not the army base. That's fake. That's all set up. And it's the army base is actually in the peace camp. Aye. So see all these weirdos you see in the, in the peace camp? They're all like just dressed up, soldiers all dressed up. Ah, right, okay. So see if things were actually kick off. So are the peace process. Or mad caravans and all that, right? With all not and all that and all the big myself would all come firing out of the wee caravans. So they'd <laughs> bomb, they'd nuke Faz Lane and they would ignore the peace camp because they think that guy's just smoking a big bong. But it's not a bong, mate. It's, it's a an early surface, surface to air. Rocket bomb. <laughs> Scud myself on a, bo- a rocket bomb. So all these human daisy chain people are trained killers. Aye. Aye. Of course they are. I'd believe that. Do you really believe that they're living down there for 30 years trying to like shut down that camp? They're shut down the, the army base? They've not done anything. Nothing's uh-huh. changed. Do you think it's suspicious that they haven't managed to stop that army base yet? <laughs> They've been there for 30, 40 years. What are they up to? Tell you what they're up to. Preparing. For war, mate. Preparing for war. What's the massive one? Uh, the big power place. I don't know. I don't know where it's Wall called. Street. Hinkley. Ah, aye. aye, Wall Street. That's the place. No, there's a big power plant in Scotland, and if it gets, if it explodes, we're all fucked. Aye, I think fast lanes maybe a danger than that. To be fair. Aye. Aye. Well, Just want well, to get well, a big shout out to fast lane by the way, because well, they keep the roads well, the really target. well. Here's the thing, right? I was kind of against it all. I was against Fazlane. I was like, get these nooks out of here, right? But I need to be honest, see, since we went to Helensburg, the condition of the roads are fantastic. <laughs> They're maintaining, the army are maintaining these roads wonderfully. So you carry on, boys. Aye. There's a lot of pros and cons with it. There is. You know, you've got to, you've got to look at every side of the story, you know what I mean? And they, their roads are really awfully nice and smooth, I have to say. Oh. They put in a good shift. They do. They do. Nicola Sturgeon, you just focus on promoting my telly show. Aye. I think she would come on. I think Nicola was a member of CND at one point. There you go. Interesting fact. Yeah. What's CND? Uh, campaign for Nuclear Disarmament. Why? Oh, aye. aye. Mm. So she's hopefully for the peace. She's not done a very good but job, is she? P- peace and infrastructure can go hand so in hand. So hold on, she was in CND, right, and she was pretty, she was <laughs> into disarmament, and then now she's, she's, she's a top person in Scotland and she's done nothing about it. It's a bit of a failure, that, isn't it? <laughs> it's a bit shite. She is brand new though. Have you met her? No. Oh, she, no, in fact, I have. I, she drove past us one time and I waved at her. I like her. I think all politicians are shite on my shoe, mate. <laughs> well. No, don't, don't quote me. I'm not saying Nicola Sturgeon is shite on my shoe. I'm not saying that, right? Mm-hmm. I'm just saying all politicians are shite on my shoe. Okay. I agree is with that you. Not good luck. Shite on your shoe. Well, see, this is the thing. That's what I would say if somebody pulled me up on it. <laughs> Did you go for mental for the independence stuff? That was that was pretty wild. Mate, don't put me on the spot, right? I didn't <laughs> that, that was a joint. I that's a joint. Promote my, I, of course I'm pro-independence. Of course I'm. Right, okay. That was a joint question, yeah. by the way. Uh, uh, 100% still for independence, yeah. Good. Uh, Are you alright, Robert? And nuclear disarmament. Aye. Well, I'm alright with nuclear war. I'm pro independence. So. I suppose it'd be quicker and easier if we, you know, if we are going to destroy the planet, just do it quickly. Aye. <laughs> Why don't we do a gig, a pro independence gig? I, I think we need to wait about 10, 15 years. I don't think. Do you know, it's no. See, when she tried to. Listen. Brexit needs to get really bad before we we go for it here's again the, here's the problem with the pro, doing pro independence gigs and all that kind of stuff nowadays you, we can't monetize it anymore right <laughs> we can't make any money out of it because all the parasites have already done it see the last time there was the referendum and there was all the, all the bloggers and all that and people <laughs> setting up newspapers and all that all making money out of it exploiting it journalists exploiting it oh we'll run our own news station our own news channel no, it's an independence thing we'll try to get as much money as possible with it. They've, they've ran the well dry can't do anything about it now so it's been parasites no oil left see this Brexit shit as well and I, and I don't really care about that but see when I found out that Mars bars are running it that fucking that got me man 
<laughs> that when Mate, Brexit... definitely an aura in it, because I, I was in the co-op yesterday and there's loads of the wee fun size ones. Mate, give it six months. I've not seen any mini one bars recently, to be honest with you. I don't know if that's a direct consequence. Of I've not seen them about in years. Aye, you can't have like a mini one bar. What about the new Iron Brew since the sugars went away? It's not good, is it? See, that's another conspiracy, by the way. I think uh, Iron Brew are full of shite. Because, <laughs> uh, see, every time you get a can of Iron Brew, there's still sugar in it. And then all these people are running into the shops thinking, oh, there's a case of Iron Brew with sugar in it, let's stop. But there's no amount of sugar, though. Uh, it's it's less sugar on that. Aye, barely any sugar. It's like the code on the, uh, the can is green when it used to be red. It used to be like heart attack zone. I, th- I think they should sell both batches. They should s- sell the high sugar one, but you pay more for it. Aye. Do you know I think there should be three. There should be the new the new iron brew, and then there should be the old iron brew, and then there should be a third kind of iron brew that's got like eckies attached. To it. <laughs> <laughs> and you can just choose. A lot of people would would get the eckies one, wouldn't they? Well, I wouldn't, mate. <laughs> I would go for option two personally. The sugar. <laughs> well, uh, I had a can recently with a sugar in it, and it was just as good as eckies because I've I don't. You know. I don't know if you can say on this podcast that Iron Brew is as good as Eckies. <laughs> I wouldn't say... When I say Iron Brew is as good as Eckies, I mean it's just... It's sta- like, I feel like ecstatic. 1990s Eckies? Aye, or? like ecstasy, like Nirvana. Right. Like it's not the actual drug. Oh, like the actual achieving ecstasy, Even though, the aye. Nirvana going to heaven aye. ecstasy. Aye, like, even I though see. Eckies are good as well. <laughs> But, you know, I. You know how Prince recorded the album, um, he recorded the Black album, right? Aye. Uh, and then he recorded Love Sexy as well, in that whole period of flux where he decided to scrap the Black album and make Love Sexy instead. People put down to him uh, trying ecstasy for the first time. Aye. Would he, what album do you think Prince would have done if he'd have had a can of Iron Brew? <laughs> I think he'd still be alive, mate, if he had Iron Brew. Don't bring, so bring it up, mate! Don't bring it up! Sorry, mate. I'm sorry. Oh, there's one thing I say is when I'm coming into Deiras, I say don't talk about Prince dying. I'm sorry, mate. But you know for a fact he'd still be here. Same with Michael Jackson and all. There's a lot of people that'd still be here if they drank Iron Brew. If Michael Jackson was just lying on that table getting Iron Brew pumped into him by a <laughs> doctor. IV Iron Brew. Mm-hmm. He was taking everything else, to be fair, do you know? Aye. So, and it is, it is, well, look as he did Iron Brew is what you take sick people. But who brought Michael it? Certainly not that doctor that killed him. If Michael, if Michael Jackson had done an Iron Brew advert and stayed a Pepsi advert, his hair wouldn't have went in fire. Aye. That's true. The world would be a very different place. See if they brought my can Iron Brew and some grapes when he was dying in the bed. That would have, that would have been a game changer. Do you know what I mean? Oh, it's yeah. a selfish world we live in, mate. Aye. My, my wee son the day was talking about Michael Jackson. He's a big Michael Jackson fan. Uh, and our guinea pig is dying at the moment. Uh, but he was saying, oh, the guinea pig will go up with Stan Lee and Michael Jackson. And he went, but the brown Michael Jackson, because he doesn't like the weird white Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> just as well, yeah. That, that with, the, with just the brown Michael Jackson and the brown Stan Lee in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, how long, How what's the shelf life on a guinea pig? Uh, ours have lasted a couple of years. Uh, we got, we got two, Did you get your money's worth? Two off of Santa, but one of them was pregnant. So we got another one, and the other one was that we bought was like the evil gremlin. Uh. And everybody was allergic to it, and it would bite you. So And it died first, so that was alright. Oh, uh, yeah, it died. Aye. <laughs> What's his name? Uh, there was. So G- Gaston was the one that died. Wow. After the ladybug in Ben and Holly's Little Kingdom. Uh, we've got Chewy, we've got Rosie and Wookie. Wow. Uh, I we're down to two, and nearly one. He might, he might be dying as we speak. Do you know uh, they eat guinea pig in Peru? They do, yeah. aye, it's a delicacy. Though. Yep. So tell your son that the night as you're tucking him into bed. <laughs> uh, I went to Peru and I seen people eating guinea aye. pig. Did and you not have a bit of guinea pig? No, I was too, I was too scared. And was it, was it quite oat like, Everybody Aye, it was that. like it's full blown guinea pig, man. They never even took the hair off it. Do you know what I mean? I was like, <laughs> oh. cook it first. Do you know what I mean? Aye. The thing was still squeaking. Uh, 
They're nice wee pets. I am full of protein, I know about. So, <laughs> are you no roasting with that one? No. I imagine that gu- guinea pig flavoured iron brew. <laughs> they bring out anything these days, man. Uh, aye, you know roasting that. When are you getting a uh, Doctor Jordan Peterson on your podcast? How do you know him? How do I know him? Aye, I don't know him. I don't know him personally, but I know that he was playing at the Kings, doing his thing, talking to all his wee virgins, pals. <laughs> like it's a cult. Aye, it's a cult. It definitely is a cult. You and should get. You should try and get him on your show. Explain to the you people. Get me one, and I'll debate him. What, 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 what would they debate you? He would be talking. Fuck oh, me. He'd be, he'd be talking. You need to like. Don't actually. I was going to say you need to go and watch some Jordan Peterson videos, but I'm actually saying don't go and watch them. Let's just let's just not even talk about. Them. <laughs> is that because you made it up, or is that the guy that done making a murderer, or the guy that's on Rogan's podcasts all the time? It's a guy that's on. Joe Rogan's podcast all the time. Aye. Because that's my only frame of reference for podcasts is Joe Rogan's podcasts. Aye. And everybody that's on that is a dick. It is a bit bro... What's it called? Like bro culture? Mm. Like meatheads, isn't they? Aye. Uh, they call like lassies birds and all that. You're not into that, are you? No. It's not guys. It's no cult. This is a very cultured podcast. Aye. I feel... More open-minded. Very, cultured, very woke as well. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> we're welcoming. Bevan's about to change. All Channel Four's moving up here, isn't he? Aye. Yep. Uh, Channel Four's good. Are they? Aye. Sounds to me like they're wanting a tough war. Moving up <laughs> to Glasgow, try to take on the BBC at their end game. If Channel Four want a tough war, they can get a tough war. That's what I say. Well, you want to go against them? We can smash them up. I think I, think I could take Christian and Guru Murphy any day of the week. <laughs> Just leave a, a guinea pig's heed on the blanket. Uh, <laughs> go back to England. You're not welcome here. <laughs> no? Baby Joby, go and head to toe away, Rab. Head to toe? Toe to toe. Don't know, man. Who's I just think it's interesting. I just think it's interesting that Channel 4 decide, oh, we're going to move up to Glasgow now. No, just about, run about the time. Uh, my new show, The State Yet comes on Friday 7th of December 10pm BBC2 Scotland suddenly Channel 4 are like oh maybe we should have a wee base up there now you know what I mean Aye. Try, to, try to leech your talent away from BBC Scotland nah there's no way to happen it's not going to happen mate it's not going to happen well I say I would never do panto and tell us about the panto how's that how's, how's the rehearsals going we start I start pa- uh, panto rehearsals on Sunday we're going to Dundee and it's Cinderella and I'm going to be an ugly sister and it's our, it's Who's the other ugly sister? Tom Urie. <laughs> He's going to be the other ugly sister. <laughs> why, are you, why are you smiling? <laughs> why am I smiling? Because you're sitting with a ski mask on, st- <laughs> staring right into my eyeballs. <laughs> why, why am I smiling? I'm shitting myself. Uh, aye, so, aye. Would you ever do a panto? You guys? Aye. Aye? <laughs> is it too, too daft? No, it's too much work. Aye. What is that? How many shows do you need to do? Sometimes two shows a day? Two shows a day. No chance. Nah. No, day, no. no way. We'll play you this back in 20 years' time. No. <laughs> Aye. Honestly, I, I'm saying this anew, right? And I know if, I, you know if you ever see me on stage in a panel, just shoot me. Like, just take, I take a sniper rifle into the Kings, right? Because I'm going to assume yeah, I'm in the big one, right? I'm in the big one. <laughs> if you ever see me, right, coming up like that, like, what is the thing they put, say to Paul Doon? Bring Doon the. What's the thing they. The, the clute. The clute. Paul Doon the clute or whatever. Just fucking clute me right through the nut, man. A sniper <laughs> rifle. Take me out. Well, cheers for your uplifting talk there. I feel uh, better that I've decided to do panel in my so, life. But I'm saying it's because it's too much hard work. Aye. It's like, it's too much. That's why. No, because, it is hard work. No, because I'll tell you, I went to the King's Theatre about five years ago or something, six years ago, and I saw, and it was a, it was Gavin Mitchell and Karen Dunbar who were both in the King's panel. And that's probably up there with, like, maybe the best comedy performance I've seen on a stage ever. So I'm certainly not being sniffy about panel because... They people are amazing. I just know if I ended up in a panel, something something's went wrong. Like I'm, I must have terrible tax debts or something. <laughs> because because I just it's, you know it's just no. I, I just um, that's no for me. 
I, I do remember I was like oh this will be easy a wee pant oh it'll be a good laugh and three days in I was wearing this massive jacket and obviously I had a jump about the stage like I was a humpback uh, mm-hmm. not good enough, and work. it was just like this is mental the lights and all the makeup and stuff it was it was intense it was and it's like you're in the middle of an acid trip for a month you know what I mean? Get that one a poster for your panel. Aye. Come Bring on, the kids. wings, by the way. Acid trip. Aye. You let sit by it. Aye. I just eat a gel boat then, dear. Ah! Merry Christmas! <laughs> <laughs> by the way, uh, I know this is Glasgow Live. We're streaming live. Um, people are more than welcome to ask for questions. Uh, I know this is going to be a wee bit mental. I don't know if there's any questions prepared. But David Mullen saying he knows who the mask guy is, and Mark Caffney saying that it's Robert Florn, but can I have him an argument about who it is? Wow. Well, it's well we, my name has been on the show, my name's Aye. been mentioned on the show. Just pay attention, you idiots. I know this is like, it's no, uh, this, the, yeah, this is above, probably above the normal thing you would see on Facebook or whatever, right? It's no, it's no some lad Bible shite you're watching now, Aye. so pay attention. What a lot of shite. Is this the audience we're getting? Uh, Mar- can you give Margaret Jordan a shout out she's been very persistent Ni- too, too persistent because <laughs> we don't want to give like, Darren's next stalker a shout out <laughs> she might get the wrong idea I know as I'm sitting on a couch uh, with my robe wide open I'm like, alright Margaret how you doing uh, hi Margaret Jordan nice to s- nice. thanks for the views Margaret uh, any other ones Ah, they're away. Alright, okay. So, you's all set for Christmas? Uh, I just got a message since I was coming in there th- to say that you have spent £284 in Smith's Toy Store. Uh, do you accept this? And I thought I was being ripped off, but no, Donna's just Christmas shopping while I'm out. And you for fo- earning money. <laughs> you <Yeah. laughs> saying I'm a tight bastard, no, no pay? No, no, not at all, not at all, Dan. <laughs> so you thought you were a victim of fraud? I did, but no, it's just Donna's like nah, two hundred and fifty nine quid two, on toys. Two eighty four. What? I'm assuming on toys. Aye. The Smith's toy store. She was shopping in, but aye. That's proper Wally Wonka in the chocolate factory down there, isn't it? Aye. Imagine having a job in there. Have you ever been in? I've been in there, man. It's magic. It's, it's mental, <laughs> isn't it? It's magic. It's not like the Jolly Giant. You don't remember that, man? There was a big giant. You don't remember the Jolly Giant? Aye. But I can't even remember... There was like, a big giant right at the door. Oh, in the in the toy store? In the shop, aye. Oh, right, OK. I thought you were talking about for the telly. Do you think, no, the Jolly Green Giant. Green giant. No, no, oh, the green right, giant, OK, like, right, sorry, sorry. <laughs> talking about, like, the Jolly green Giant. Giants. The Jolly See, giant. I've, I've not got Wayne's, so I don't... Oh, but this is when I was a wee guy and, and Moz used to go there with a the Provy checks. <laughs> it was before <laughs> Toys R Us, the Jolly Giant went to it. Aye. And then, but Toys R Us a lot, they went into liquidation. We did. How can you go into liquidation selling toys? Kids just milk you for toys. It's Amazon, so no, mate. It's uh, Amazon is the problem. It's changed. So the PS4s and that. It's Amazon. That's a problem, man. Amazon are into everything now. The military. Um, they're into moving into comedy now. They're starting to run Amazon, I think, are back in Channel 4 and this move up here for this war Aye. They're, they're involved in everything fingers and everything new Amazon I buy I got uh, a year's worth of fish oils for Amazon for 7 quid so you know what do you do with them bathe in them no it's you know ration them right. it's like quite similar to Robert you're just pre- preparing prepping prepping for the, the big day end of days Aye. but you save a lot of money comparing it to Holland and Barrett you know Everybody's swearing by this CBD oil they now. Don't know if you've got any of that. What? What is that? It's like cannab- cannabinoid oil. You spray it under your tongue, but loads of folk are using it for loads of different kind of illnesses and uh, remedies. Aye. And do you get a dunt off it? I don't know. I think I might be a wee bit. <laughs> I think it takes a couple of weeks to kick in. How's that? No, I thought that was illegal. No, no, it's it's not. I think it's no got. I don't know if it's the THC or something's not in it. Ah. So, aye, it's my focus and it's good. That's what I unbrew should do. Aye. They've lost eighty percent of their customers. They need to sprinkle a wee bit of that in their their shite aye. and bring it back. Well, yeah. back back in the day, Coca Cola used to be cocaine they put in it. 
Maybe they should go back to that. Putting gear in it? Aye. Aye. Obviously through through legal frameworks. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why we're all scared. Oh, I think I might be on the Joe Rogan podcast here. Just realised, <laughs> listen to this part. <laughs> this is why we're all skin. Put gear in fish oils. Uh, you don't like your Rogan podcast? No, I don't. I don't. No, I don't like that. That kind of thing. The only, I kind of feel we're on the cusp of something here in Scotland, Darren. You know what I mean? Yeah. I kind of feel like. When this new BBC Scotland channel launches, right? And the visionaries that are behind this, I think we're going to see a bright, a bright, a bright new dawn. You know what I mean? Despite the fact that people weren't paying their tele licences, right? We're going to see a, a, a bright new dawn. I just, I just kind of feel that we need to be pulling the young team in, getting the young team on the telly for one thing, getting the young team on the telly and making shows that the young team can watch, recognise, like, recognise, like. They're in, they're in people on the telly. Then they're not going to places like YouTube to get their stuff because they go to places like YouTube to get their stuff that's how they're all getting getting these these parasites jumping on these right wing Nazi parasites jumping on and twisting their minds at an early stage we have to use the power of telly in a positive way again it's not enough to just go oh mum will help all these young funny people to be like YouTubers nah that's not the way ahead let's get them on telly Let's get them on telly, and I think the BBC are going to do that. Don't know what Channel Four are going to do when they come up here. Well, hopefully they do that as well. We can live in unity, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, any more questions? Any uh, dunce, Helen Walker, saying it's just for nerve pain, John? You're right. Any dunce, just for nerve pain. That was That's what she's saying. <laughs> By the way, I, I forgot to mention we're going to do a competition. So if you have enjoyed this, uh, even if, if you've not enjoyed it, I <laughs> you could share it and you'll get a chance to win. Would you like to continue? Aye. This? So uh, we're coming master in the Dijon Five. Are playing the Barrowlands on Saturday, twenty second of December, and we're giving away two free tickets to to Darren's podcast watchers. So uh, what if they do shares? Like and share. Like and share. Can I like can I share. add a prize onto that? Aye. Can I add a prize? And um, whoever wins that can also. I don't know if you want it to go to the same people, or, but I'm. I know an old guy called Biscuit Boyle. He's doing a show at the Glasgow Comedy Festival in March, and there'll be two free tickets for that as well. Brilliant, mate. Thank you very much. Well, I tell you what, then. See, since we're in the spirit of giving, I'll offer two free tickets to my Glasgow show as well. Friday the 10th of March at the Stand Comedy Club in Glasgow. So, uh, obviously, one person can he take six tickets. We'll so we'll date three different people or something, three different winners? Aye, we'll try and figure it out and we'll spread it. Spread the love. 40 quid a ticket for mine. 20, and 20 quid for mine. Aye. And Biscuity Boy. How is Biscuity Boy? He's good. He's doing. He, he finished his wee tour. He, he did well. He was surprised. Lots of good sold out shows. But it's still, you know, he was he was on a high for a for a wee bit. But he's still he's going back to an empty house and that. You know what I mean? Because he's <laughs> he's misses his deed and you know his house. There's a lot of dance because that black dam up it was. You know what I mean? Ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, she died a couple of years ago, didn't she? Ten years ago. Ten years ago. Aye. And uh, uh, he's just kind of trying to get back into gigging. And aye, just... well he's doing that gig in March. So aye, so good. You get your tickets for that because that will sell out. Aye. Uh, aye, so that is, if you share, you've got a chance to get free tickets for any of us. That would be appreciated. Uh, did you say that's time? Aye. aye. Anybody else would, would you like to say anything else? No. Just aye. again, your show is when? Saturday 22nd of December, Glasgow Barrowland Ballroom. Friday 7th of December, uh, the state of it, BBC Two, Scotland, 10pm on iPlayer after that. There's me and a whole host of brilliant people. Big Taj as well. They're doing some amazing beatboxing. He's brilliant, uh, he's brilliant man. He's unbelievable. Uh, loads of people. Susan Riddle, Nathan Byrne, uh, uh, Rachel Jackson, um, just producer Joe. Um, loads of people involved in that show. You, you need to check it out. Brilliant. Well, Troops, thank you very much for coming on and being part of the first one. It's very much appreciated. Uh, nice. Maybe you can come back one day. And thank you for everybody tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed yourselves, and a like and a share would be appreciated. I've been, Sorry. I've been Darren Connell, and I'm getting shouted for the back. Yeah, what were you saying? 
Gary Rockford. Gary, all right, mate. Cheers for just buttoning in right at the end of the fucking podcast there and ruining my entire night. But nice to see you, Gary, tuning in, mate, and that's appreciated, mate. See you later, troops. Have a good night. Bye bye. Cheers.